Um, in 1925, um, the poet and scientist and writer, South African poet, scientist and writer, Eugene Marais, uh, wrote a series of articles um, about termites. And um, it led to the book, his book, The Soul of the White Ant, which was later plagiarized by, um, by a Belgian scientist. But in, in, in this series of articles, he looked very, very closely at the way the termites lived. And he developed a theory that the termite is not actually the animal. It's not actually the creature. The, it's the termite nest that is a living creature or a living being. And he even went as far as to think that it may have a soul. Um, I'm not going to talk about ants and termites today, but this idea has been very interesting to me. Um, my own research, uh, in some of my own research, I've looked at Johannesburg as a city. And it's been interesting to, to take this idea of Eugene Marais and to say, what if we were to look at the city as a body, as a, a, a whole organism or a being that has different parts and that has different um, organs that all have their own rhythm? And what if we're able to look at these different organs as parts of a body and listen to them in a way that a doctor might listen to a patient's breathing, or in a way that a doctor might take a stethoscope and listen very, very carefully to, to a patient's heart. So a few projects that, that brought this idea to me. Um, uh, I worked very closely with a, an artist, Teresa Collins, on the Minutes Project and musicians uh, that I'll talk about later on Jawsy Rhythm Analogues. But first, the Minutes Project, which was a collaboration between myself and Teresa Collins between 2005 and 2011. We were studying Johannesburg. We were interested in our city. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you to take the sound down a little. Uh, thank you. Um, we were interested in exploring the city through the mediums of film and especially time-lapse photography. And um, it's a city that, as you know, is always changing. It's always losing some parts and gaining some new parts. And we were very interested in trying to capture what was going on at the time. Um, Time-lapse photography, just a quick explanation, is uh, where one would set up a camera, select a scene, set a camera up, and then let that camera take one picture every few seconds or maybe every minute. And when this uh, footage is play played back, um, Time is sped up and increased at a, at a huge rate, so that sometimes we would see an entire day going past in a minute uh, from sunset to sunrise. So this technique we used um, to try and get a different view of the city that we were familiar with, and very much also a different view of everyday things, not just big dramatic events like buildings exploding, but also something as simple as someone selling tomatoes on the side of the road, which. Uh, anyone who's been uh, in and about the inner city is very familiar with. But this gives us a different, unfamiliar view of this. So very much the small everyday events we were interested in, but then also the bigger events, because uh, Johannesburg is always a very, very politicized city, and there are always big political events that are churning around in, in, in the place we live. So this was an interesting one. On the left hand, you can see uh, in 2006 there was a celebration of the Freedom Charter at Walter Sisulu Square, which we filmed. And the very next day, there was a service delivery protest, um, a Kasatu organized service delivery protest at the Library Gardens. So it's very interesting to look at these two quite big events simultaneously. But besides looking at the movements and patterns and rhythms of these smaller events and bigger events, we also became aware that all of this is held together and sits within the bigger cycles of nature. So we have day going into night, and we have the seasons changing. And we became gradually aware of very, very complex kind of interpenetrating rhythms that we live in. Uh, we took the project further in 2010, um, and it, uh, called it Minutes 2010, and uh, we started looking at public spaces, very particular kinds of public spaces in Johannesburg. Um, some of the work that we did we went underwater in public swimming pools, which these public spaces have a strange secret kind of life that you're not always aware of when you're actually using them in the normal way. So swimming in a swimming pool doesn't feel quite like this, but this is, this is the life that the swimming pool itself has over periods of 24 hours as we filmed it. Uh, this is the Linden public swimming pool. And 
so looking at this as a space of leisure, it has a certain rhythm, it has a certain kind of movement. The kids there became aware of the camera, so they, <laughs> they like little fish that went to the... Uh, um, but also other kinds of spaces, so the Bree Street taxi rank, which I had known for many years as a user of the taxis, but um, c getting a completely different view of, of the space and the rhythms and the movement in the space compared uh, to others was quite brutal, and one becomes aware that the actual rhythm at which the movement happens in the space is under pressure. It's under economic pressure. It's the pressure to get to work on time. It's the pressure to be in place A or place B. The track taxis stream into that space at uh, exactly three in the morning and then build up this kind of crescendo of rhythm um, to a very frantic pace. So having brought the project to this level, um, it, I, I became very interested in, in looking at it in a slightly more scientific way. Um, and I came across a theory um, or a, a half-constructed science called rhythm analysis, which is the science of rhythms. It's not a finished science, it's a, a half-constructed science, which makes it very interesting because we can still build it, we can still continue inventing it. It was uh, first uh, posed by a, a Brazilian scholar, Dos Santos, later taken up by Henri Lefebvre in France, and these days, all over the world, they are dotted uh, little organizations and people that are committed to continue building the science. Um, my interest here, and can we have a little bit of sound now? I'd like to, you to just for a few seconds listen to the sound that you, you'll be hearing now. Can we have it? Um, it's not a washing machine, and it's also not, I mean, my association with that sound was blood rushing through the valves of a, of a heart. Um, but what that sound is, in fact, it's traffic. And uh, we did a sound recording of traffic at a street corner, and then sped it up quite enormously while keeping the pitch the same. And that is the kind of rhythm that that gave. So I became interested, how can we study this rhythm more deeply? And uh, I explored various methods like that one. This is a visualization of um, the sound at uh, a traffic light. And one can see here that this rhythmic pattern that the robot is laying down as it controls the traffic is very clearly visible. And um, it gives us a sense that there are different ways that the rhythms of the city are structured, sometimes very linearly and directly by something like a traffic light, and other times more organically. Um, so, I, I tried to develop my own way of representing these rhythms as graphs um, so that one can look at it and analyze it. Uh, and the graphs that I developed ended up looking something like this. Um, to read the graph is very simple, actually. The whiter areas mean more movement in the, in the film. Uh, this is actually a period of 24 hours uh, over five days at the taxi rank. Uh, and one can see kind of peaks of uh, more intense movement particular patterns of movement evolving there. Uh, this graph, the top one is actually much more chaotic. Uh, it's um, the pattern of pigeons uh, on a square in, in the middle of town moving around. And there's the, quite a beautiful curve that comes from the sunlight moving across that space. The bottom one, uh, that line is actually drawn by the, by the moonrise. And then analyzing this a little bit more, I took the taxi rank graph and on a particular day, took quite a, a close look at it. And um, if we look over here, you can see at about six in the morning, there's not that much movement. By between actually seven and nine, there's this very interesting pattern of movement that appears. Uh, very much more intense, you can see much more white markings, and then the movement becomes more chaotic again later. And this step pattern, I don't know, those of you who are familiar with the taxi rank will know this, uh, the step pattern is when it is peak time and there's very, very large queues, the queue marshals then have a strategy of clearing one queue at a time. So when one queue is being cleared, uh, it creates a marking like that. Then the following queue and the following queue and the following queue. And that happens three times before the rhythm becomes more disparate again. So there's some practical usage to this. It's still being explored. It's kind of in its infancy. But there's already some uh, architecture students at University of Johannesburg that are using this method um, to study spaces and design movement around those spaces. 
Um, but my problem was, at this stage of the project, what do I do with these graphs? Do I just let it be some kind of abstract data, or do I do something more interesting with it? And uh, the answer came to me in a way that if one can write down, or if the city in some way is writing down its own rhythms, maybe it's possible to read those rhythms in a fairly rhythmic way as well. And that led to the Jawsy Rhythm Analogues project, uh, where we worked with Bradley Maponya, uh, Joao Recha, and Sia Makuzeni on actually reading this um, graph that the city itself had written to read it as a musical score and to compose music from that. So the score was given to the musicians. They literally read off this musical score and then um, uh, played and, and improvised music uh, to that. So I'm going to play a quick clip from that performance, and I'd like you to read this in quite a complex way. So at the top, there are the films that were shot. At the bottom, there are the graphs, and the uh, the, the white markings are going to move from one side to the other. When they reach the red line, that is when the movement happens that actually made, made that mark. So there's a, a strong synchronization there. And then to listen to the music um, and to try and hear the relationships between all of this. I'll just play a short clip of that. <laughs> So that's the kind of thank you. That's the kind of result that we've got. Um, the, this invest investigation is still ongoing, but um, the idea that we can combine science, music, poetry, and art in one project um, is still very dear to me, and I hope that we'll continue to do this. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>